Well, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's good to be with you all. And today I, I want to talk about a, a man named William Tyndale. William Tyndale. And I've been thinking about William Tyndale a, a lot this week because this week was the anniversary of his death and, and martyrdom. William Tyndale was killed in 1536 on October 6th. So we just had the the anniversary of his death. And William Tyndale lived a, a really, really amazing life. He was quite an uh, amazing man. In 1524, he was forced to flee his native England because he had been translating the Bible into his native English, which at that time was illegal. It was a capital offense. And, and so Tyndale was forced to flee and he spent the remaining 12 years of his life on the continents in different cities throughout Europe. And, and over these next 12 years, William Tyndale was quite productive. He was already a scholar in Greek and in, in Latin, and he was able to translate the entire New Testament into English. And then he learned Hebrew in his time away as well, and he, he was able to translate half of the Old Testament into English before his death. And through a series of connections, and William Tyndale was able to smuggle in thousands of copies of the English Bible. And so men and women in England were able to read the Bible, read the words of Jesus in their own language for the first time. And of course it was a, a it was punishable by death if you were discovered with one of, of these English Bibles, but but many were able to read the scriptures for the first time in their own language. He had a, a network of people who would snuggle smuggle the Bibles in through various ways and he was unable to be caught for a long time because he wasn't in England, because he was traveling throughout Europe. Well eventually Tyndale was betrayed by someone he trusted, and he entered a room and found a, a group of, of Catholic officials and guards waiting for him. And after a lengthy trial, Tyndale was strangled and then burned at the stake. And I, I absolutely love Tyndale's last words. He's 42 years old now, never married, He's been living for 12 years outside of his homeland. He's about to be strangled and burnt at the stake. And these are Tyndale's last words on October 6, 1536. He said, Lord, open the King of England's eyes. That, that, was, that was his final plea. That, those were his final thoughts. It was a prayer. Lord, would you open the King of England's eyes? Tyndale just hit one note, one note throughout the throughout the course of his lives, that he wanted a Bible written in English. He wanted a, a Bible in English that, that would be approved by the king. And so his last prayer was, Oh Lord, would you, would you change the king of England's art so that he would approve, that he would commission a, an English Bible? I just love William Tyndale's story. And you know, I, I wanted to bring it up because... Tyndale is a man worth remembering, but also because I just never want us to take for granted the fact that we have a Bible in English that we can read at any time, that we have on our phones, that we have in our homes. Let us not take for granted the fact that, that men throughout church history have died for the privilege that we now get to experience. They died that we might get a Bible in our own language. Let us not take for granted our Bible simply because we are not fighting these same battles today. You know, as a pastor, often uh, I'm asked by, by many, you know, what, what's the best Bible? And by that they mean, of course, you know, is it the NIV, is it the ESV, is it the NLT, is it the NRSV? What's the best kind of Bible? And, and I always want to say the same, same thing in response. I always want to say in response, you know, the best kind of Bible is the open Bible. Let us honor the legacy of men like William Tyndale by, by reading the scriptures, by meeting with Jesus, 
by being filled with the Holy Spirit as, as we encounter God in the scriptures. Let us turn to the Bibles again and let us, let us receive from Jesus there. So hope this was encouraging for you. Read a, a little bit more about William Tyndale if you would like. He lived an amazing life. He's worth, worth studying. And I'll talk to you soon.